a myth that body image issues only affect girls and women, when in reality, no gender is immune. And our next guest is trying to expand the conversation to include men. The book, Shattered Image, My Triumph Over Body Dysmorphic Disorder, reveals one man's struggle with eating disorders, alcoholism, and his obsession with plastic surgery. Please welcome author Brian Cuban. Thank you. Let's start by explaining body dysmorphic disorder and how it's different from an eating disorder. Sure. Body dysmorphic disorder is basically when someone takes a small or non-existent defect in their body. For instance, for me, it was my stomach. For some people, it could be a small or non-existent blemish and exaggerates it to the point where they're unable to function, quote unquote, normally in life. Okay. So for me, there was fat shaming and I was bullied over my weight as a, as a child and as a teenager. And then as I cycled through all these behaviors, I still always saw this fat little boy, quote, I had to use that word, but heavy little boy in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And that was body dysmorphic disorder. So you can have body dysmorphic disorder without it leading, with it, without it leading to an eating Correct. disorder, but you can't have the reverse? Correct. Eating disorders correlate with body dysmorphic disorder. There's about a 30% of those with body dysmorphic disorder will get eating disorders. People also drug addiction and steroid abuse and other things we'll talk about. But it is not an eating disorder. Okay. You said that body shaming for you began in your teens and, and, and when you were a child. Yes. Is there a moment that you can pinpoint that it all like kind of changed for you? Yes. There was a lot of fat shaming in my house with my mom. I had a difficult relationship. I don't blame my mom for what happened. Uh, we have a great relationship today. And then uh, there was a lot of bullying at school over my weight. And back in my day, this was well before a lot of the people were, you know, born. Going viral meant 15 people in a lunchroom knew about yeah. it. Yeah. So it was a different kind of different kind of brick and mortar deal mm -hmm. but I was actually physically attacked and I had my pants ripped off by some kids who thought they looked funny on me oh. these gold kind of satin disco pants that my brother Mark had given me oh. and that I wore all the time because we're very we were very close and we still are and they ripped them off me threw them in the street down on my fruit of the loom tidy whities oh. I run out in the street and gather them all up and you know sort of waddle on home and that was sort of the point where I sort of just would see this reflection of just this bullied little boy who couldn't stand up for himself and would never be anything but that, this mm -hmm. heavy little kid. That's a very traumatic event. It was. Yeah. It, was it was so traumatic, I could go to that spot in Pittsburgh, PA, and show you exactly where it happened. Wow, wow. yeah, wow. for sure. My twins are um, 10 years old, boy and girl, and they're just beginning to enter into adolescence. So what are the signs that parents and teachers need to look out for? The same kind of things that I've described, obsession, with things that either are very minute or don't exist. A child becomes obsessed with a blemish and, there, and starts isolating, doesn't want to go to events when really it could be nothing mm -hmm. or not even there. Or a child starts obsessing over different aspects of the body, the stomach, the arms, muscularity, when they look, I mean, there's no normal, mm -hmm. but when, when everything is just fine and they start isolating, they start not wanting to do things, they start talking about it obsessively. Those are the signs. Now, your book also talks about a moment in college when you decided you would never hear the word ugly again. And you began dieting and exercising, yes. thinking that you were taking charge of the problem. Yes. But in fact, you started to sort of spiral out of control. Absolutely. It, it's kind of an interesting story. My father was moving me up to Penn State my freshman year. And we were looking out the window. It was a beautiful fall day. And I make eye contact with, in my mind, looking back, this beautiful brown-haired girl. And within 10 seconds, my entire life envisioned, okay, we're going to get married, we're going to have kids. <laughs> yeah. I, I was a, a young man who had never even been on a date or kissed a girl or held a girl's mm -hmm. hand. So it wasn't a smile. It was a smirk. A smirk. And she goes, ugly. No. Ugly. And I'm not the only child and teenager to have this happen, but... People react in different ways, and I was already someone who felt very bad about his body and had no self-image or sense of self. It was right there. I decided my world was out of control, and I had to take control to get accepted. What was the thing that made me feel good as a child? Food. Yeah. But as a child, food, I ate more and got heavy. I decided I would start restricting, and as an 18-year-old freshman at Penn State, I delved into the, I descended into anorexia and transitioned into bulimia at 19 and wouldn't go into recovery until 2007. This is you running, yeah, and then yeah. that's you there at sunbathing? Doing. Yes. I also, I also uh, transitioned into exercise bulimia, and what that is is when you substitute excessive exercise for calories. I was running 10 miles a day, 20 miles a day, and then I transitioned into steroids. 
And all of this was to try to change this image in the mirror of this bullied, heavy little boy that would never change no matter what I did. Mm -hmm. You mentioned your brother Mark earlier. That's Mark Cuban. Yes. He's one of the sharks on Shark Tank. He's the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, yes. a very high profile person. He's famous, and we all have seen how fame can affect yes. the people who are famous, mm -hmm. but also the people who are around them. Has, has your brother's fame and high profile had an effect on you? Sure. Not? Sure, but it's not his fault. Right. When all of these behaviors that I engaged in actually started before he became famous, as we would define mm -hmm. it. Right. But when you have no identity of your own, when you only see a bullied little boy in the mirror and with the body dysmorphic disorder and you're wanting acceptance so badly and that's your identity, okay, wow, I can be Mark's brother and all of a sudden girls who in my mind would never talk to me, talk to me. Mm. I had become a drug addict. People would give me drugs and drinks and that is how I defined myself. I had no identity mm -hmm. of my own. Yeah. So the, yes, there was a period of time when that accelerated my alcohol abuse, my drug abuse, the steroid abuse, but it wasn't Mark's fault. It was because I had never created my own sense of self. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I find it fascinating that body dysmorphic disorder occurs almost equally in yes. men and women. And I think that there's so much focus placed on helping women and we don't keep men in this conversation very much. So what do you think we can do to encourage more men to open up with their, about their struggles? It's a difficult situation because it's the chicken and the egg. Yeah. We need more men to speak freely, but so the men are stigmatized about body image. For women, it's a much more natural conversation. And the flip side of that is women tend to have a difficult, more difficult time talking about addiction and alcohol. But for men, it's body image. And what I can say is that it's okay to speak up. It's okay to say, hey, I have these issues. You are not alone. When I talk to young boys, when I talk to men, that is the one thing they want to know. That's the one thing I wanted to know, that I was not alone. And I think we just need more people, uh, you know, more people that are known, more people who no one knows, just to speak up and say, it's okay to say I have these issues. It's not the end of the world. There is hope. There is recovery. Mm -hmm. Brian, thank you so much for being here and sharing thank your you. story. Thank you. Thank you.